Hi, I'm Randall Allen Loy and I'm a reproductive medicine specialist in Orlando, Florida. Thanks for tuning in to the Infertility Channel. Today we're going to be talking about a topic that is on the forefront of the lay media and that's advanced paternal age. The older dad. How old is old? Well, we know that the best years for a man to become a father are between ages 25 and 44. With advanced paternal age, there are increased risks for certain disorders. For example, dwarfism, achondroplastic dwarfs. We know that schizophrenia may be associated, bipolar affective disease, autism spectrum disorders. In fact, we know from the journal Nature that there has been a 78% increase in the rise of autism spectrum disorders just in the last decade. Much of this may be attributable to the older fathers. What else? Well, we know that there can be increased risk for Marfan syndrome, which is a connective tissue disease resulting in long skinny bodies. In fact, it's been hypothesized that maybe Abraham Lincoln had Marfan's disease and it also results in heart problems. Apert syndrome, uh, that's kind of an elongated head and widely spaced eyes. There can be some other defects as well. Those are thought to be associated with advanced paternal age. As men age, they have more and more defects in the genetics of their sperm. The number of genetic mutations increases by two per year, such that there is a doubling every 16 years. A 20-year-old is one half as likely as a 36-year-old to have genetic mutations because of age. Now, what sorts of other things do we worry about? Well, it can translate to IQ. There was a huge study from Israel, more than 44,000 patients, that found that the highest IQ resulted in children born from fathers who are between ages 25 and 44. Younger than 25 and older than 44 resulted in lower IQ. Now there have been some questions raised about the socioeconomic status of the fathers in that particular study. In other words, how wealthy were they? That can be a confounding variable. But it's important to realize, of course, that the older the father, the more problematic the offspring. Now another hot topic is so-called epigenetics. Epigenetics is how genes react, how different molecules around the body latch onto and unhitch from the DNA, causing expression of a particular gene. So things like age, yes, herbicides, pesticides, tobacco smoke, alcohol, other toxins, all will cause the genes to react differently. So we know that as men age, these epigenetic errors are passed on to children as well. So in this country, we have had this paradigm and it's shifted a lot over the last 50 years. But in the boomer generation, we have said, okay, let's get a good education. Let's get a stable job. Let's have financial security. Let's have children. But that's putting a lot of men over the age of 44, increasing the problems for their kids. We are creating a very different society by the demographics of having children late. We have to start having kids younger. Fertility is decreasing around the world. The World Health Organization criteria of what a normal semen analysis is has changed markedly over the last 30 years. And I could even envision a time in the near future where men may be preserving their semen much the way women are considering preserving their eggs for future usage. As more and more of these data come to light and hit the lay press, men in their 20s may wish to cryopreserve sperm such that at age 45, they might thaw out that sample from age 25, decreasing their risks for all of those diseases we discussed at the outset of this episode. I'd like to tell you a story from my practice. This goes back a few years, but it uh, seems like it was yesterday. We had one of those classic May-December marriages, 61-year-old husband with some heart problems and a 33-year-old wife, amazing. Anyway, the wife called me and said, over the last few times that they had engaged in relations, she was having these splitting headaches, just pounding killer headaches, and even thought she may have passed out for a few seconds on a couple of occasions. And so I asked her to go home and see what lubricant they were using, what was in the bedside stand. So she called back and she says, I don't know if this makes any sense to you, but I, I thought it was KY, but it's actually something called N-I-T-R-O-L paste, nitrol paste. I said, don't use that anymore. That's for your husband's heart problems. That dilates his heart vessels and it's doing a very good job dilating the vessels around your brain. So get some KY and have better relations. Anyway, one of the problems of advanced paternal age. Thanks for tuning in. 
We'll see you next week. Subscribe if you haven't already. We're having a lot of fun here. And if you have any comments of a personal nature, please write them at the address below. Thanks so much. See you next week.